Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. For those of you who haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an attorney. I do elder law. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. There are 60 of us. Everybody does something different. I do nothing but this. Um, I started doing these shows several years ago to supplement the uh, seminars that I do at the Salt Marsh, talking about law issues that seniors tend to have a concern about. The purpose of this show is to make, have you learn about the people that you should know about if you're a senior here on the island. Um, and one of those uh, is Charlene Thurston. And thank you very much for coming on. You're welcome. Um, so as I was mentioning to you before when we talked, Charlene, the yeah. what, you know, this is show is just about kind of who's here and how they got here and what the programs are and how people could be affected by them. So you told me you're not, you didn't grow up here? But you've no. been here for a long time. A very long for time. For a long time. Yes, yeah, since 1973. Since 1973. That's right. And we were joking about mm -hmm. that. I was like, ah, yes, I was in college, right? But, you know, it was a while ago. <laughs> um, and, and so why did you come here? And what have you done here? And what are you doing now? And how, it, how does that affect seniors who are here and other people who are here? Well, I came here because I met my future husband here. And we had met before that, so... Having yep. been from Boston, I thought I'd better come and see what it was like to live on an island. To live on an <laughs> before island. Before going too far into which that is relationship, special, which, which you, is which definitely are, very special. Which obviously you bought into, <laughs> Yes, right? it's been a great place to live. It's yeah. been a fabulous, a fabulous place to live, great quality of life, and um, I've really enjoyed it. And you told me you're one of those people who actually never left. You came here and you haven't been like a block of time in Cincinnati or something. Right. You've been I mean, I, I leave frequently enough to go on visits, but I haven't left the island for periods but of time. But you've never left. To, yeah. right. Right, we've just stayed on the island since then. And what have you done here, and what are you, and how did it lead up to what you're doing now? Well, so I was a nurse at Mass General Hospital when mm -hmm. uh, my husband and I met, and when I came here, I started to work at the hospital. And um, there's actually a very funny story to that. I had been head nurse at a general surgical floor at Mass General yeah. Hospital, and I was only 24. So you know, at that age, you think that you really you're know big. a lot of stuff. Sure, you know? you're really big then, right? <laughs> so I thought, oh, I was coming from Mass General Hospital to you know, little Nantucket Hospital, yeah. and I had so much. I would have so much to offer. But uh, when I asked uh, the then director of nursing, Goldie Rogers, said whether I could come and work here. It yeah. was sort of in May, I guess it probably was, of 1973. And yeah. she said, oh, no, dear, we, you know, we have, we have enough staff. And, and, you know, we, and then I said, but I've been doing all this great work. You know, wouldn't that be helpful? Yeah. And she said, no, no, dear, everything is fine. Everything's and she said, well, fine. Why, you know, why, what's making you want to come to the hospital anyway? And I said, oh, I said, well, my boyfriend lives here. And she said, oh, really, who's your boyfriend? And I said, Barry Thurston. She said, oh, you're Barry's girlfriend? Sure, come along. Come on so that, in. <laughs> so That's it wasn't right. my well, own credentials that got me welcome in. You know, to it the, was welcome just, to the island. It was just going with Barry welcome that got, that the got me here. Yep. So, yep. Um, so anyway, so I did get the job and then started working uh, at the hospital, um, which was then a little cottage hospital. It's yeah. really grown quite a lot since then. And um, so have been doing lots of different positions at the hospital since then. Um, for the first, you know, many years, I was head nurse of the hospital. You know, we huh. really grew a lot of the programs and, um, and the, you know, so the level of nursing and everything that yeah. was being offered at the time. And but, it's, but it's always really been great work. Yeah, but always needing to be a general purpose hospital because yes. the thing about yes. that island is yes. it's, it's, it, you gotta, it's got to be here. Well, right? that, was, that was one of the things that was really eye-opening and really interesting was that you know, you think Mass going general. from Mass General yeah. and are, you know, very acute, kind of acutely ill service floor yeah. um, that you would see everything and then and coming here you would think would be so much easier but it really wasn't because coming here you had to know how to do everything from right. a person who was having a heart attack to a person who was having a baby to at that time we even had to go out and um, and cover the ambulance. There were no ambulances. There you was had to a go van. You had to cover the... You, you had to, were you, you had the ambulance? Out. We, the staff of the hospital was would the ambulance. Would actually jump in the ambulance? You would have and... to go from leaving one of your patients yeah. to go out um, with one of the orderlies in a van yeah. to go and see, you know, you, the call would come into the hospital. So it was really eye-opening. So it's That's really been great. a fabulous place, place to work because there's been, um, you know, much to learn and much to give, which has been good. And, and incidentally, I, I've heard that, that there are plans to kind of start to grow it yet again. That there's The a, hospital, well, yeah. the hospital is, 
you know, is is building a new hospital. So yeah, the right. hospital continues to change. And that's happening fairly. That's happening fairly yes, soon. Yes, they're going yeah. to. We're, we're actually our office is being moved off premises um, as we speak. <laughs> And so, um, because you're still at the hospital. Yeah, our, our, so so we'll get to the program that I'm doing now, yeah, which is yeah. uh, palliative and supportive care of Nantucket. Palliative and supportive care, care of, of Nantucket. Nantucket. Right. Yeah. We started years ago in 1982, actually, as Hospice Care of Nantucket. And was this? And is that a part, a function of the hospital, or is this a standalone 501c3? What? what right. What, what so is? it's it's a little it's a little more complicated than usual. We yeah. always felt as though it would be best to be. Um, you know, based at the hospital, and mm -hmm. at that time we had sort of approached the hospital about whether they would want to have a program like this, and it a really great partnership developed between people in the community who were interested in bringing hospice to Nantucket at the time. This mm -hmm. was back in 1982 now, mm -hmm. um, and the hospital, um, and the hospital couldn't take on anything that was going to be losing money, and um, as it turned out, um, but we always felt as though the program should be a hospital-based program because that was the healthcare hub of the island. Sure. That's where physicians and patients and nurses and other practitioners were. So That's where um, they all are, right. On a little island, you want to be able to be, um, have access to your patients and the staff that you're going to be interacting with. So we always felt as though that was the best way to do it. So we actually developed an arrangement. One patient that had being, been being served, um, whose name was Charles Roth, um, at the time by an all-volunteer hospice program back in the early days, 1982. So, oh, I see. So just, just, just to, so that I understand it, so that it was a, a, it was a volunteer program. When, once again, had you created yourselves as a nonprofit, or was this just well, a bunch yet. of folks? At, at that point, it was, was sort of, you know, a, it was a real gr um, grassroots effort yeah. to try yeah. to create a service for the island. That yeah. um, This is in the early days when hospices were starting anyway, you know, nationally and internationally. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, what we did, so this one gentleman who had been really, um, you know, helped by the program um, left, left the program, it's his, his house, and to be sold, to be used to create, you know, a hospice program. I so see. I um, see. What, what developed was that a partnership between the hospital and then a, another 501c3 that we developed. Formed call it was called Hospice Care of Nantucket Foundation at the time, and now it's Palliative and Supportive Care of Nantucket Foundation, I see. Um, where um, where the hospital would have the program as one of its departments, mm -hmm. but it would be funded through through this money and also through future donations to the foundation. So I see. So that physically, you were, and, and were you always kind of on the campus of the hospital? Yes. So you were kind of there, right? In kind of their structures and stuff, but but really funding. Fu funded self funded and, and, st and still funded through donations to palliative and supportive care of Nantucket Foundation. So we by by creating this structure, we we actually um, charge nothing for our services. All of our services are free of charge, mm -hmm. and all of our you know staffing um, is supported through donations to um, palliative and supportive care of Nantucket Foundation. I so see. it's been a great um, it's been a great way to provide a service for the island. And um, and keep it you know fairly streamlined in terms of its costs. And so it's, tell me tell me what the service is. It's palliative and supportive care. When I hear the words palliative care, I always think of this contrast between palliative and the other. Not that bit when I what I would call curative. 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 Right. right. So right. it's care designed to get better as opposed to care designed to make every day as good as it can be. Right. So so. Um, palliative care is really a broad term, oh. meaning to um, relieve suffering. Really, really, you know. So the the palliative care programs are always structured around trying to improve a person's quality of life, no mm -hmm. matter um, what the illness. Um, for all, for people with serious illnesses, so improving their quality of life by giving really good pain control and symptom management, so good physical care mm -hmm. to keep people comfortable, and also good um, relief of emotional and spiritual distress. So they're always sort of offered through a team of professionals, you know, different different professions, nurses, doctors, social workers, um, sp uh, chaplains, or spiritual counselors, and some and they they generally have volunteers um, who are available to help their patients as well. And, um, and so the, you're really trying to deal with that whole package of 
the things that are important to you. Right. And, and, and as you say, you tend to be dealing with people who are, are really have sick. Have serious illness. They've got right. serious illness. Right. right. And they could be in any phase of serious illness. Let me just back what up for a minute because I want to. I just want to mention one other thing. Yeah. One of the things that's really great about palliative care programs and hospice programs, and we can talk about the difference yeah. between the two in a little bit, um, is that they not only focus on the person with the illness, but their families, because these serious illnesses don't just affect the person who's sick. Right. It, you know, they, they really are family family situations. And so, right. you know, you have a whole constellation of people who are being affected by it. And I suppose that must be really interesting for you to watch as a nurse who's done this for a long time, because I'm, cause, cause I'm sure you find for all of the curative folks also, mm -hmm. It affects the person who's there, but also a whole other cluster of people. Oh, but that, absolutely. But, but right. medicine has tended to, or we've never thought about dealing with that kind of holistically, but except in this area. Right. Except once, the Ill, right. once, you're, once you're not going that way, but you're just trying to be kind of living with what you've got. But you one know? of the things that we like to make sure people are understanding now about palliative yeah. care is that palliative care can be delivered for any person with any serious illness, any place along the the disease process from even, so even if um, a person has a disease that can be cured, mm -hmm. they still can use good symptom relief and emotional and spiritual support for them and their families. Oh, so you really so it's not an either or thing, so which you... is more what hospice is. And yep. that's really why we changed our name several years ago from Hospice Care of Nantucket to Palliative and Supportive Care of Nantucket. I see. Is because all hospice care is palliative, but it's only available to people with a life expectancy of six months or less. Six, that's the kind of the medical care definition of exactly when you're when you're ready, ready for hospital yes hospice and care. so that's only end-of-life care and it's only if people have stopped pursuing um, aggressive curative types of treatments mm -hmm. what we realized and the reason that we changed our name you know several years ago now is that people who are dealing with some of these illnesses, whether they could be cured or not, need that same kind of attention and support. So good yeah. symptom control, pain and symptom management, and good attention, as you're saying, holistically, yeah. to how they are coping emotionally, how they are you know, dealing with, with things uh, you know, um, socially even, um, and also um, how their families are coping with it. So um, all of... Those things are not just important if you're at end of life. They're important from the time of diagnosis onward, even right. if you're hoping to be cured. And so we now do have a lot of patients, for instance, a lot of our cancer patients that we work with are, are working towards being cured from their disease, and many of them are. So for those, we're offering those same kinds of you know, um, support. Yeah. And it's, if you think of it as an additional layer of support for patients and families, that's sort of the best way to think about palliative care. And so I, it, it doesn't matter whether the disease is curative, curable or not. Or not. And I suppose that, that, that must be something that's kind of changed I'm thinking of this as a layman, mm -hmm. regarding cancer. Because yes. when you said cancer when we were growing up, mm -hmm. cancer just meant done. Yes. Right? You're yes. just, you know, there may yes. be a, dis a given distance until you're done, but you're done, right? Whereas there's a very different feel to that now. Right. It, 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 so, so you, so are primarily the folks that you're dealing with and the families folks who are suffering from cancer? Or have you found that, that the disease mix has changed? over time yes. also. Yes, the disease mix has changed and in palliative care it will continue to change. So we, so a lot of our patients, I mean we have a whole cancer program, which yeah. by the way, um, I don't know whether you're around when Summer Across America is here, but Summer Across America has been a great, um, a, you know, just a great charitable um, cause for Summer both Across us. Summer Across America. And swim. Swim, swim across, across America. America, right? So and it's a my, it's a it's national. My that's it's okay. Here, right? It's swim a across, it's a yeah. national um, you know fundraising opportunity for yeah. uh, for can and it, but that is specific to cancer care. So they were um, just here in August and in Nantucket. We've had uh, fabulous success with it, uh, thanks to the leadership of. Um, of, of Jim Pignato and Jill Rothke and mm -hmm. a lot of um, volunteer um, members who work hard to, to make this go. So they've been able to raise this year over $330,000 for cancer care in the island. Well, that's a significant and it's number. Really fabulous. It's really yeah. been a fabulous cause and a that's... great way to support cancer care, both for what the hospital is doing through its oncology services yeah. and, a lot of, and the work that we're doing for cancer patients through our organization. I see. 
But for so. those, so, but for those pa cancer patients, yes. now you're dealing with once again people who are cutting back, people who aren't. Other than cancer patients, is there when, when you were describing that what you what you mm -hmm. were doing, it it was sounding like some of the clients who I deal with who are very concerned about dementia issues in, in terms of their symptoms at the end. Right. But 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 some of whom also have these very serious just physical problems. Parkinson's folks where typically the dementia kicks in at the end, but there's this long period of illness. Yes, in, so, in so one of the things that I think you'll see more and more yeah. is, is that as palliative care expands more and more, mm -hmm. um, there'll be much more of a recognition that these patients who are dealing with these serious chronic diseases really need the kinds of care and support the palliative care programs could provide for them. And yeah. the thing to remember is that it's not instead of other care. It's in addition to other care. It's an yep. additional layer of support for those patients and families. So I think one of the things that's been great about palliative care programs is that they don't take over from your primary care physician or your oncologist or whichever physicians you're working with. Yep. They add their services to them so that you just d you develop a broader team because you need more services, you know, and you have then you can give pa patients a menu of services that they could choose from. So so it, it at this point in the organization, do you do you also provide the services? Uh, the, what I'll call the the medical services, yeah. the the doctor and doctor and skilled nursing services, or are you are you always in addition to those services which are being brought to you by the patient? So we do we sort of do both. Yeah. So so. What we so for instance, I'm a nurse practitioner, so yeah. I might be seeing a patient of one of our uh, regular, you know, primary care physicians on the island, yeah. who might be having a lot of issues with pain control and symptom management, and he or she might say, you know, Shalin, will you go and see this patient? or have them come in and see you, yeah. and you know, and sort of let's come up with a better pain control plan and see how that goes. So then I'll be working, you know, with with that physician for that patient mm -hmm. and, and also they might also have visiting nurses so we might communicate with visiting nurses or they might be a part of the oncology um, patient care load that are yep. coming to the hospital so we'll work with the oncology staff around you know what's going on so I that see. we try to make things as seamless as possible we try yep. to really I think we all I'm not saying just we but they also uh, meaning other practitioners work together to see if we can make things as coordinated as possible for the patient and still give them and their families sort of this more complete care. And I, and I would suppose, I didn't mean, I didn't mean no, to do something, okay. but I would suppose that that's one of the advantages that you have doing that here is you do have a fairly small community. Right. So you have right. all of the players who are used to each other. Right. So someone comes in and people start automatically thinking about these other players and that's the beauty. That's, that's actually one of the thing. beautiful things about Nantucket is, right. and one of the reasons that we wanted to be based at the hospital was because then you have, you know, you, we have the luxury in Nantucket of having everybody together. Right. And there aren't a million, you know, there 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 aren't a lot of miles, and there aren't a million different players. So we all right. know each other pretty well, and know how to communicate, and know what we all bring to the table for that right. patient and family, which is really excellent. And we'll see patients wherever they are. By the way. Um, so we'll see patients in the hospital, you know, so if somebody is ill mm -hmm. um, and really needing our services and they may be end of life but may need good pain control or may need some really good help for a depression that they're yeah. having over their illness or the loss of someone that they love, we'll visit patients in the hospital. If they're in the nursing home, we'll see them there. If they're home, we'll see them there. And, I see. That's and, great. and also they come into our office. That's so, great. So a great it, it, looking forward, mm -hmm. right, my intuition when you're describing this is I think, you know, one of the reasons why Medicare only pays for this kind of care when you're at end of, end of life is just a price matter, right? They, they, they're just for figuring. For hospices. For, yes, for, for yes. Hospices, so right. they, so they'll, they'll be, they're right. willing to pay for these kinds right. of extra things, but only if you can be demonstrating that right. it, you, you're kind of. And, and so I guess my question is when you look forward, do you, do you anticipate do you anticipate other government programs starting to pay for that or do you anticipate as just kind of my gut reaction is that that you really need that kind of foundation that kind of ongoing development of a of a of a a source of money to make sure that in the future 
if you're in the on the island, this is available to you. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, I think that you know insurance programs and everything are are paying for pieces of things, and as you said, for for end of life care for hospice, mm -hmm. there is this hospice Medicare benefit. Um, but in order for people to be eligible for that, then patients have to have a life expectancy of six months or less and have to have stopped aggressive curative treatment. And right. so Medicare will pay for that. So now there is Cape Cod, um, Cape Cod Visiting Nurse Association mm -hmm. is the VNA that services the island now. And they, off island, had a Medicare certified hospice program. So they've been yeah. able to bring those services to the island too. So Medicare will cover those services that package. So sometimes uh -huh. we um, if so um, when we were called hospice care of Nantucket we were always too small by ourselves yeah. to to make that work to make that pay for itself because the yeah. Cape has a really huge census over on the Cape they can they can just use some of that and you know and, and um, make that work oh sure because to become Medicare well. certified I mean right. that's a right. whole it's a big, it was a that's big a thing. paper well what is a paper jungle now it's an electronic yes, jungle, yes, right, right to make that go so so anyway so um, so that's why we developed the program in the way that we did but mm -hmm. we're really you know happy that they're here now being yeah. able to offer a Medicare certified hospice program and we still uh, oftentimes will be working with the same patients and we always were used to working with the VNA anyway yeah. Um, yeah. and so some of the the nurse are even the same ones that we used to work with so we just we just work together and try yep. to collaborate and do stay focused on what the patients and families needs are and um, and just try to do things seamlessly for them and that's great for you folks because to some extent that means there are some in some of your cases there are these extra resources that are available so that you can be kind of just being you, you can be just providing more stuff right Right. right. And therefore I mean, we, covering so we more continue people. To, we continue to provide everything that we've always provided right. in addition to working with people now with these other long-term chronic illnesses and yep. also um, diseases that they can be cured from, whereas before it had to be more limited. And so when you look forward in your ideal world, because mm -hmm. obviously you spent a lot of time thinking about mm -hmm. this because you've developed a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff, right? I mean, you're yes. one of those kind yeah, of well-known names time. here. I'd always, <laughs> one of those like many, right, that I keep hearing the same name. Those of. lifers, you know. So, so when you think about where this goes, yeah. you know, where does it go? How do, how, does, how do you envision the program changing over the next well, five years? Well, it's a little hard to say. I think the whole, the whole field of palliative care is um, fairly new in healthcare years. You know, right. it's probably been about 20 years that many programs have gotten going. Um, the hospice movement really started in this in the 60s, late 60s. Palliative care as separate kinds of programs came yeah. along uh, much after the fact they really started in hospitals. But we actually have always been pretty cutting edge here because although a lot of the big palliative care programs and some of the big hospitals now are starting to look at how do we do outpatient palliative care or home palliative care, we've been doing that for years. For the big, so the, it's yes. really been great. Yes. We've really always, uh, it's one of the beauties of being small as long as you keep your eyes on the on the prize sort of thing, you know, you can yep. stay ahead of the game. Whereas it takes bigger bigger organizations much much more time to to, to kind of shift. It's like the ship, yeah. right? Exactly. Shift. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I think that um, I think that more and more we're starting to look at how do we help people with you know with uh, serious cardiac disease and respiratory disease or Parkinson's disease I see. and Alzheimer's and renal disease because it's it's sort of started out of the can you know out of cancer care but now it's more and more people you know need it's, it's really just good care it's just good care. it's just good care but That's you right. can't get it in a 15 minute office visit you That's know it's right. like mm -hmm. these our visits usually last an hour or more so, I mean, we might be in and out quickly if somebody is really stable and they don't, you know, we're just touching base with them. Right. But most of our visits are at least an hour. So, and um, so, and so it sounds like at least for the, for, for my, for the folks that had talked to me a lot, for folks who are 65 or older, mm -hmm. right, you may be coming a part of a lot of their lives, yes. whereas yes. they would have only thought that you were a part of their lives if they had cancer. Right. Which or is a if really they were dying. Or if they were dying. So, okay. So, so it's right. really great to disconnect that and think, yep. you know that those are not limitations now yes it could be you know it's, it's people who have these really serious chronic you know chronic diseases could really use this right. and people can be in and out they don't need to um, you know they can come in for consultations or uh, questions that arise yep. or even 
um, assistance with doing, say, advanced care planning, you know, as my disease, you know, who, who is my health care proxy? Who do I want that to be? Which yes, means yes, who do yes. I want to speak for me um, if I can't speak for myself? All of that, all of those things, all and, of those things. And, and in addition, what we're trying to help people understand more is that if they do have a serious chronic disease, I mean, everybody should have a health care proxy if they're 18 years old. Or older, everybody should have a healthcare proxy. But there's a point at which you really have to have one. Right, and and, really, and really. the other right. thing is that now what we're trying to help people to understand is that if they have a serious illness, then they should discuss with their physicians what their wishes are and what their values are as when that disease want. progresses, so right. that instead of waiting for the crisis and there you are in the emergency room and people are wondering what to do, you've already had the discussion that says, I've had this really bad chronic lung disease for a long time. If, it, if I get an exacerbation again, you know, if I get into trouble again, I don't want to be shipped off to Boston. I don't want to be intubated. I don't want a tube on. I don't want to be on a ventilator or anything like that. Right. And actually, this is, this is a great time to be bringing this up because I know every year I have a I have a, a friend uh, named Sandy Cordovi is a geriatric care manager over in Martha's Vineyard, uh -huh. and and we've been trying every year to bring this conversation up right now, yes, before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, yes. the yes. time the That's time where you're most likely to see a lot of the relatives, right? It's also the time where the relatives are most likely to show up and say, "Oh boy, mine's really changed," you know. But that's the best time to have this kind of yes, conversation. The and just table conversation. Just because because it may be that you're not going to see him again for a year. Yes. And yes. and as you get old, a lot can happen in that year. Right. So to just be giving a people people a real sense, not trying to hide where you are in, in terms of your life, but to be saying, here's where I think I'm going to be this year. Mm -hmm. And so if this happens, this is what I want. Right. That's a wonderful point. Right. That's a wonderful it's great. point. It's great. Yeah. It's you know we really try to encourage people. In fact, in our last newsletter in the spring. We wrote, um, I usually try to write a lead article about something yeah. that would be educational to the, our readers because it goes out in the newspaper. Yeah. And it was about having the conversation. So it's about getting people, you know, have you had the conversation? Have, have you, you sat around and told people, you know, if this happens, this is what I'd like? Right. Um, because you don't want these tragedies to occur in which you know people don't know what you want, and so you have family members bickering about and what arguing. you should be doing for each other. That's right, and they're arguing. The last thing that you wanted right. for your kids. Right. This has just been really informative Good. for me. I think it's been informative for a lot of people. Can you just give the contact information for your organization if people sure. want to kind of know more? Sure. So we're called, it's a long name now. That's okay. <laughs> it's palliative, Talk slow. Talk it's slow. palliative and supportive P -A -L -L -I -A -T -I -V -E. care. P-A-L-L-I-A-T-I-V-E. Right. It and, took me a long time to get that. Uh, you're good. The palliative and supportive. And supportive care of Nantucket. It, yeah. The acronym is PASCON, P-A-S-C-O-N. P-A-S-C-O-N. It's a little easier yeah. for people to remember. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're, we're based at the hospital, although because the hospital has a new building, yeah. is putting in a new building, yeah. we're going to be moved out to NAW shop for a while. To so, NAW shop. <laughs> so anyway, right. Right, you can just... So know, except for that. A, right, right. You're not we're just going to go to the Bean, just to all the business right, right downtown, you know. <laughs> Behind so, it, yeah. yeah, so it's just, you know, 57 Prospect Street, Nantucket, Mass., 508-825-8325. Can you quickly give and them the... And our website the, is www.pascon, P-A-S-C-O-N, dot org. Great. So. Charlene, thank you so much. Thank you. This was, thank I think, fascinating to me, I think, for a lot of people. Great. Thanks very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Bergeron Briefs. Thank you.